In this lesson, you'll learn about fields and how to fill in user-defined fields. We're currently working in the same job that we were working in in the last lesson when we included several standard pages. Notice that there are placeholders for various items on the title and appearance pages. Each one of these orange placeholders is called a field. There are three different kinds of fields. One is called a predefined field. This kind of field fills itself in based on information from your computer or transcript, typically dates or times or page numbers. For example, you can see here on page 1 fields for first and last page numbers in the job and the day and date that the file was created are already filled in. These are predefined fields that filled in automatically when the file was included. Another type of field is called field list group fields. These fields are primarily used for appearances to fill in attorneys' names, addresses, and other contact information. You'll learn more about filling in field list group fields in the next edit lesson. The third type of field, the one we're going to work with now, is called a user-defined field. These are placeholders for any user, case, or job-specific information that you'll need to fill in on each job, such as the county, plaintiff, defendant, case number, witness's name, and so on. There are a number of ways to navigate to fields. You can click Special Edit, Scan For, Fields, and move directly to the next field and be prompted to fill in that field. You can also click Scan and Fill in Fields. This function will, as soon as you fill in the field, move on to the next field, and then the next, and then the next, until all fields in the entire job have been filled in. You can also just use the regular scan command. As soon as I scan to and land on a field, a fill in field dialog box appears. Notice this area of the dialog box labeled select list? If I had previously filled in information for this field that I might want to use again, they would appear here in the list. Before you fill in any field for the first time, I will click this set scope button. Here you will choose how the select list should be filled in and when you should be prompted with information you've previously typed. If you select user, the text that you type will be stored and displayed for all jobs in the same user. For example, this first field is for the state. The state I work in isn't specific to any one job or to jobs in any particular case, so I'd set the scope for the state field to be user specific. Let's say for this particular job, I was working in the state of California. I'll go ahead and type California and click OK. The state field has been filled in throughout this job and California has been stored and will be displayed in the select list as an available value for the state field in all future jobs. The next time I fill in the state field in another job, I won't have to type California ever again. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to click the Manage Jobs tab, double click the Keys to file, include the title page at the top, and now scan forward to the state field. Notice the California is already available as a choice in the select list. All I'll ever have to do from now on, whenever I want California to be the state, is click California. I'll never have to type it again. You may have noticed when I typed California, I typed it initial capped, not all capped, but it appears in all caps here on the title page. When I open the reveal codes pane, notice the format symbols that surround the field, all caps on and all caps off. These format symbols are making sure that in this spot the text appears in all caps. Now, notice when I scrolled down to the next page, there was an occurrence of the state field that was filled in. In reveal codes you can see that there are no all caps on or all caps off surrounding this occurrence of the field. So this occurrence of California is not all capped. If I were filling out the entire title page right now, I'd scan to county and then district and do the same steps I did for the state. These next two fields are also good examples of user-defined fields for which you'd set a user scope. These next three fields are great examples of user-defined fields for which you'd set a case scope. I'll just go ahead and double-click plaintiff and then I'll go ahead and click set scope. The reason I'll select case scope for this field is so that the text I type for this field will be stored and displayed for all jobs in the same case but will not be displayed in any jobs outside of the case. If I have more than one job in the same case with the same caption, I'll be able to pick the plaintiff's name from the list rather than have to type it again. But when I include a title page into a transcript outside this case, the name of the plaintiff for this case will not appear. Okay, now that the scope is set, 
I can type the value for the plaintiff field. In this case, the plaintiff is an individual named Thomas O'Dell. I'll go ahead and type Thomas O'Dell. Great! The plaintiff field has been filled in throughout this job, and Thomas O'Dell has been stored and will be displayed in the select list as an available value for the plaintiff field in all future jobs in this same case. The witness field is a good example of a user-defined field for which a job scope would be set. When you select a job, the text that you will type will only be stored and displayed in this one job. In a proceeding where there is only one witness, and the witness is only testifying for that one proceeding and is unlikely to appear again for any other job, there is no need for the name to be displayed in a select list for other jobs. Now, the name of the witness in this job is David Bros. I'll go ahead and type his name, and then press Enter, or click OK. And as you can see, the witness name has been filled in here on the title page, and on the next page, and at the end of the job on the signature and certificate pages. OK, let's quickly review what we learned in this lesson. After you include a file, you will scan to the placeholders. If the placeholder is a user to find field, then the first time you fill it out, you'll set the scope for that field as user, case, or job. If you filled in the field before and the information you want is in the select list, you can just click that item. If the select list doesn't contain the information you want, type the text for that field and click OK. The fields will be filled in throughout that file and the information will be stored according to the scope you set. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to fill in fieldless group fields. Before you proceed with that lesson, you can practice filling in user-defined fields. Go to the training user and follow the directions for exercise 13 in the edit practice document. Then, when you're ready, proceed to the next lesson in order.